Whether you are young or old, clueless about physics, or studied it all your life, magnets do feel a little bit like magic. There's something mesmerizing about watching an invisible force make two pieces of metal leap together or fly apart. But magnets aren't just a quirky glitch of physics that lets you hang pictures on the refrigerator. Magnetism is a force generated whenever there are electrical charges whizzing around, whether it's the bits that make up the individual atoms, or swaths of electrons and electrical currents that power our devices. And the bigger the electrical current, the more powerful the magnetic field. Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this SciShow List show. To keep building your STEM skills and exploring beyond this video, you can check out brilliant.org slash scishow. That link will give you 20% off an annual premium subscription. Given its deep link with electricity, it's no surprise that magnets are a vital part of modern technology, from computer chips to medical devices. But sometimes a little magnet won't cut it when we want to give something a really big push or pull. So we got curious about what the strongest magnets humanity has ever created are. So here, are five of them, including one so powerful it blew up the whole experiment. One reason we need crazy strong magnets is to peer inside the human body. And there is no better example than the whopping 132 metric ton Isult magnet, developed by French scientists at the Neurospin Research Center as a component of a very powerful MRI machine. Is this the one that exploded? You're gonna find out soon! So this enormous magnet needs to be cooled down to negative 271 degrees Celsius, which is just two degrees above absolute zero, which is the coldest temperature possible. It's built for medical imaging to give scientists a deeper look into the activity of the human brain. We measure the strength of powerful magnets like this in units of Tesla, and the Isult magnet clocks in at 11.7 Tesla. For comparison, like a super strong fridge magnet is something like 0.01 Tesla, so we're talking you know, like a thousand times more powerful than that. MRI machines work by making protons inside your body line up with a magnetic field. Then the machine sends a pulse of radio waves that pushes the protons out of alignment. After that pulse is gone, the protons realign with the magnetic field and give off their own radio waves. And the MRI machine can use the pattern of those radio waves to construct an image. Wild. This sounds kind of freaky, but it is totally harmless. The thing is, small magnets don't cut it for getting many of the protons deep inside of your body to all point in the same direction, which is why MRI requires such powerful magnets to do the job. Ordinary MRI magnets are somewhere between 1.5 to 3 Tesla, but more powerful ones, like the Isult, can give us a finer picture of what's going on inside the body. That's because the stronger the magnet, the stronger the signal given off by the protons as they realign with the magnetic field after that pulse of radio waves. That that helps resolve different features, like small blood vessels, more easily. As for why the actual physical magnet needs to be so huge and cold, it comes down to how the magnetic field is generated. As we have mentioned, the stronger the electrical current producing the field, the stronger the magnet. So as well as having an electrical coil big enough to pass a huge current, cooling the equipment down lowers the resistance inside the circuit. In fact, for certain materials, like the ones in the Isult magnet, the circuit becomes superconducting. That means it has no electrical resistance whatsoever, making it easier to drive a huge electrical current. With this magnet's absolutely beastly field, neuroscientists are able to study the activation of really particular parts of a person's brain inside the MRI scanner. That gives us a much more accurate picture of what specific functions each of those tiny regions of the brain do when it comes to the job of making you you. Including when it goes wrong. By working out the functions of increasingly specific parts of the brain, researchers hope to create new tools for diagnosing patients with neurological or psychiatric disorders. So sometimes big magnets need cooling down to operate, but we can also use a powerful magnet to contain super high temperatures, which might even help produce clean energy. In 2021, a team led by MIT and the startup Commonwealth Fusion Systems developed and tested a magnet capable of reaching 20 Tesla. The goal is to use this kind of magnet to sustain nuclear fusion, a carbon-free, safe source of energy that produces much less radioactive waste than existing nuclear energy. It's the same process that powers the sun, where light elements like isotopes of hydrogen fuse into heavier ones, but lose some small amount of mass overall. That missing mass has been converted into energy, as described by Einstein's famous E equals mc squared. That's kind of like the nuclear 
nuclear fission used in existing nuclear power plants, which also convert mass into energy, but by splitting atoms rather than fusing them. The goal is to get fusion going on Earth in a way that gives us more energy than the amount that we put into the process. But that requires conditions not dissimilar from the core of the Sun, which is a very hot whirlwind of atoms called plasma that needs to be kept stable long enough for fusion to happen and sustain. We're talking like hundreds of millions of degrees. There are not any solid materials that can withstand those kinds of temperatures. But it is possible to suspend plasma in midair using, you guessed it, a magnetic field. Which is why this kind of fusion is called magnetic confinement fusion. That's exactly what the magnet at MIT was developed to do. Like Isult, it is the superconducting variety of magnet that helps produce the huge current needed for a 20 Tesla field. The plans are for the reactor using this kind of magnet to go into operation in 2025, when maybe, just maybe, it will provide a proof of concept for usable nuclear fusion. So watch this space. Things are getting exciting. Now, we don't always have to chase the biggest individual magnet, either. Sometimes we can use a whole bunch of them working together to achieve amazing things, like when we are accelerating tiny charged particles. And the granddaddy of all particle accelerators is the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. It's a 27-kilometer-long ring of magnets outside of Geneva, Switzerland. Physicists designed it to accelerate protons to near the speed of light so they can be smashed into each other inside detectors, which provide us a sneak peek at the interaction of subatomic particles. All of this tells us about the fundamental forces of nature, of our universe. Like, for instance, the electromagnetic force. Well, along that ring of the LHC, there are 9,600 magnets, some of them 15 meters long, 35 tons, and producing 8 Tesla on their own. In scientific terms, that is a buttload of big magnets. Like the others we've talked about, the LHC magnets have to be cooled down to about 2 degrees above absolute zero, which allows them to become superconducting. And superconducting circuits provide the huge electric currents that generate those 8 Tesla fields. The point of all these magnets is to keep the protons inside the LHC on track as they whiz around. See, it takes an electric field to actually give the protons energy as they circulate about the LHC, picking up more and more speed before they collide. Electric fields are the close sibling of magnetic fields. They're also generated by electric charges and push and pull each other around. But electric fields have some differences, and one of them is that they can give charged particles kinetic energy. Unlike magnetic fields, which can only change the direction of charged particles once they're already moving. At the LHC, electric fields are designed to give the protons a kick in basically a straight line. It takes the magnetic fields to provide the turning force to keep the protons protons going around the ring instead of slamming into the walls of the accelerator. It's like the magnets are like the banked curves of the racetrack, while the electric fields are each race car's engine. The other thing some of these magnets do is make sure the bunches of protons stay squeezed together along their line of travel around the ring. That makes it easier to slam them into each other inside one of the detectors. And when these protons finally do collide, they break apart to produce all kinds of exotic matter that can tell us about the fundamental laws of nature. Crowning achievement so far is the Higgs boson discovery of 2012, which confirmed our theories of how subatomic particles acquire mass. Now, given the size of magnets we've discussed so far, you might get the feeling that bigger is always better. Turns out, that's not always the case. In 2022, researchers at the Steady High Magnetic Field Facility in Hefei, China, announced they had reached a 45 Tesla magnetic field with a magnet whose central component was no wider than a silver dollar. Like the other magnets we've talked about. It has a whole bunch of superconducting coils, but those only produce around 11 Tesla of the field. The star of the show is inside those coils, where you will find another circuit that's just 32 millimeters in diameter. Unlike big coils, the tiny electromagnet inside has resistance when the current flows through it. Resistance means it takes a ton of power to keep that magnet going, and for sure, that makes it expensive to operate. But unlike a superconducting magnet, resistive magnets aren't limited in terms of the strength of the magnetic field they can produce. So as long as you keep pumping a bigger current through a resistive magnet, its field will keep getting stronger and stronger. And in the Hefei magnet, the tiny resistive magnet can be pushed up to a huge 
34 Tesla on its own. Setups like these are called hybrid magnets. They use a combination of the high current capacity of resistive magnets and the low power needed for superconducting magnets to make the most intense, stable magnetic fields we've ever created. Recently, researchers implemented a few clever tweaks to the setup, pushing the performance of the overall magnet to 45.22 Tesla, just beating the previous record holder at the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory in Florida. One unique use of a magnet this strong is conducting experiments on new materials for electronics, like carbon nanotubes. Those tubes of carbon, just one atom thick, are really good at carrying electrical currents. Because they conduct electricity so well and are extremely thin, in theory, a computer processor made of carbon nanotubes instead of ordinary silicon could be three times faster and energy efficient at the same time. Since electrical currents and magnetic properties are intricately linked, a powerful magnetic field like the Hefei magnet helps us study the electric properties of carbon nanotubes. So ultra-strong magnets might help us take a step towards more energy-efficient electronics in the future. Hybrid magnets are great because they produce strong but stable fields that stick around long enough for us to do experiments with. But what if we don't care about stability at all? What if we're happy to throw everything into just making one heck of a magnetic field? Well, in that case, it is actually possible to achieve 1,200 Tesla. In 2018, a team of researchers at the University of Tokyo in Japan did just that. The trick was starting off with a strong-ish field of three Tesla, which, remember, is very strong, created inside of a thin copper tube, and then squeezing that field into a very small area. Physicists call the amount of magnetism in a given region of space flux density. The higher the flux density, the stronger the magnetic field. So if you can squeeze the flux into a tighter space, you can increase the field strength. This process is called electromagnetic flux compression. The University of Tokyo team achieved compression with a bank of electronic components called capacitors, which store up a bunch of electric energy. Surrounding the thin copper tube was a steel coil. When all the energy stored up and the capacitors was released through 480 cables into that coil, it created a massive magnetic field, causing the thin copper tube to implode. So that first three Tesla magnetic field was suddenly squeezed into a much tinier space. And that is what produced the unbelievably powerful 1200 Tesla magnet. If you want an idea of how insanely strong that is, the materials used in that setup weren't even made to withstand the force of magnetism produced by the field. So the whole experiment literally and intentionally exploded immediately after the field was produced. Which is awesome! and also totally impractical for most scientific purposes. But in this particular experiment, the whole idea was to see exactly how far things could go with flux compression. So that explosion was actually a sign of great progress. What's more, even for the short time they exist, ultra-strong magnetic fields like these can help probe what happens to matter when under really extreme conditions, like when subatomic particles like electrons get ripped off of atoms. And with new frontiers of research available thanks to powerful magnets like these, it's no wonder that strong magnetic fields are as attractive to scientists as they are to metals. If you're attracted to magnets, you will love Brilliance Electricity and Magnetism course. This interactive course helps you learn about magnetic fields and all sorts of physical laws that let them do their thing. And with Brilliant, you are actively learning. The filmed demos in this course give you the chance to see magnetism in action and apply the principles you're learning to better understand the devices you interact with every day. But there's so much to explore in the world that you interact with daily. And Brilliant's online learning platform offers guided courses in way more than just magnetism. You can take a range of courses in math, science, and engineering, all with a focus on problem solving. To get started with Brilliant today, you can click the link in the description down below, which will give you 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription. Before you commit to a year with Brilliant, you can try it for free using the link or by visiting brilliant.org slash scishow. Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this scishow video, and thanks to you for sticking around at the end of it. What an episode it was! I have to just give some props to our team here. Some of the most complicated ideas in science communication all compressed into one video about the biggest and most awesome magnets in the world. That's amazing work. So I'm really grateful to Brilliant for supporting it and grateful to you for supporting it as well.